Good morning. Happy International Translation Day. My name is Alison Rodriguez. I'm from the New Zealand Society of Translators and Interpreters, and I'm president of the International Federation of Translators. And today I'd like to speak to you about some of the ways in which uh, translating and interpreting uh, navigate language, language as a barrier to sustaining culture, understanding and lasting peace. Now, this topic is taken from this year's theme from International Translation Day, which is a world without barriers. Since 1991, each 30th of September, the International Federation of Translators carefully chooses a theme and then celebrates International Translation Day on the Feast of St. Jerome, Bible translator and patron saint of translators. Since it was officially recognized by the UN General Assembly in 2017, International Translation Day has become even more widely celebrated and an important day for translators, interpreters, and terminologists by bringing greater visibility and recognition for the profession. Translation plays a key political and cultural role in, multi in multilateralism and also is a conduit for multiculturalism, bringing many languages living together. Now, the, uh, the origin myth of the Tower of Babel tells us the story of why we have so many languages, or at least had so many languages, because we've lost so many. And ironically, it also uh, tells us how language is a barrier to communication itself. It symbolically highlights the power of language uh, to unite, or conversely, to confound cooperation. And it also it frames language as problematic. It begins as our superpower and then ends up as a barrier, a barrier to harmony and to progress. Translators and interpreters occupy that space between the languages and we work as a conduit to overcome barriers and to revive communication. As essential actors in the dialogue, translators and interpreters connect worlds, whether it be in discussions around tables or in corridors, formal dinners or informal meetings, Wherever cultures and nations meet, that's where you'll need translators and interpreters. Now, President Zelensky is an excellent communicator. And even though he speaks functional English, he knows that his message will be best understood if he uses a professional interpreter. He's very careful with his message because he knows how important it is. And therefore, in order to get it across, he usually uses his own professional interpreters. Because in diplomacy, your interpreter is your reputation abroad, but in humanitarian settings, your interpreter is your lifeline. Without them, non-English speakers will not understand what's going on and will not be understood. And Indigenous languages are particularly vulnerable in this respect. Indigenous languages provide us with an intergenerational transfer of intangible cultural heritage and knowledge, and this will be invaluable in facing the future global challenges. Accessing this knowledge requires the deep understanding of a translator or interpreter because they understand not just the language, but the cultures from whence they came. Translators and interpreters of indigenous languages are often at the heart of cultural and linguistic activism and language revitalization through participating in the recovery of traditions and ceremonies or works of literature and art. But translation is a two-way street translation from the minority language into the majority languages around it provide an awareness of the richness of Indigenous culture. And translation into the Indigenous and minority languages provides access and mitigates exclusion. But none of this can happen without the translators and interpreters who allow that participation, because for many, to participate in their language of proficiency requires using a translator or interpreter, and above all, for speakers of minority languages. Language rights, the right to use your own language as an integral expression of your identity and agency, are part of the human rights agenda. Linguistic rights are fundamental human rights, because they allow access to the other important rights, such as health, justice, or education. Quite often, there are few available translators and interpreters in minority languages, and services don't always have permanent language staff ready to assist Indigenous language users. There's also often no specific training given to help staff with the specific requirements or needs of working with Indigenous languages and cultures. 
Without translators and interpreters, many voices would not be heard, many collaborations would not materialize, and many dreams would not be realized. Research outlines the role of mother tongue-based education in increasing equitable outcomes across education, employment, justice, and healthcare. Translation enables community inclusion and empowerment by providing both access to information and services and a way for a community and its members to be heard. Now, increasing advances in technology have led many to believe that translators can be overtaken by machines. Yet we already know that unsupervised machines pose a real risk, especially in entrenching existing bias and dominance, the very issue that translation aims to mitigate. While Indigenous peoples can find creative uses for technology, access to that technology is important because that can also allow them to become the custodians of their own language and heritage. Artificial intelligence, machine translation, and machine learning all pose additional risks for Indigenous languages on top of the risks for monolingual users. Machine translation is tone deaf. It's tone deaf to cultural differences, and it's really difficult for it to deal with ambiguity. And all of this raises serious questions of the ethics and cultural rights over the use of the data. AI falls short where there is a lack of diversity in the training data, increasing the chances of exclusion and discrimination. Now, one of the downsides of this technology is that it's going to be limited in its effectiveness where there is little or no data because systems are based on data, on big data, which trains on itself. So that makes it a numbers game where there's less people, there's less data. And then that lack of data can sometimes translate into a lack of diversity and then becomes exclusion and discrimination, especially for Indigenous women. Indigenous languages will continue to be marginalised because they will lack the data and those that do have it must work very hard to preserve its value for their own communities. Maori language broadcasters in New Zealand soon found themselves fending off corporate entities trying to appropriate their data, which they'd collected over decades. So therefore, guarding this data became a priority for them because the only people truly interested in or with the benefit from revitalizing the Maori language were the Maori people themselves. The global development agenda depends on a wide range of factors, economics, uh, sustainability, security, health and human rights, and environmental protection. And their successful delivery depends on equitable access to information and open dialogue, dialogue between individuals and communities, and a building of a genuine engagement in lasting relationships. And the role of translators, interpreters, and terminologists in this delivery cannot be underestimated. In the pandemic, those whose English language proficiency was limited through no fault of their own, found themselves with a 35% more likelihood of dying. So that basically made languages other than English a health risk, especially where an interpreter or access to translated information were not available. Exclusion and discrimination can be compounded by the status of the language and the difficulty in, attain, in, in obtaining an interpreter and, and for that particular language. Translators and interpreters and terminologists also mitigate language barriers to the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. With these being the goals that are specifically rely on language access, translation supports the Sustainable Development Goals by allowing access to education. And for example, we know that mother tongue education has been proven to improve student outcomes. It's also about access to healthcare, legal services, gender equality, just to give an example of where language services are essential. And yet language and language services are not part of deliverables in global development. Feedback exercises, such as the ongoing intercultural listening and collaborative learning of the NGOs that uh, are attempting to further develop service delivery couldn't happen without the interpreters and translators who help them with these listening exercises, for example. Global multilingual institutions and NGOs must recognize the importance of language in achieving their aims and begin to design coherent, sustainable linguistic policies early on 
This would assist in the overarching language management and facilitate access. It would also address a range of other language issues and address entrenched biases of majority language dominance or the use of a lingua franca, which can exclude both users and staff. Translating and interpreting is essential for their work because it increases their reach and their effectiveness. Translators and interpreters of Indigenous languages are often the only way to access and store cultural wisdom and community history, and they're also essential in language preservation. Losing a language is not just the loss of language itself, but it can also mean a loss of family connection and community, as language is the key to understanding and navigating the complex social worlds for the communities in which they live. Losing the word for a particular relationship makes it difficult to understand how those relationships interact and interconnect. So translators, interpreters, and terminologists can overcome Babel. They can overcome language as a barrier to communication and therefore as a barrier to harmony, progress, and to building culture and unity and developing lasting peace. So FIT sends you its very warmest wishes for a very happy International Translation Day. Thank you.